Here we are going to talk about global winds and the Coriolis effect, which cause air circulation in our atmosphere and around the world. So first of all, what do we know so far? What do we know already? Well, we already know that air travels from high pressure to areas of low pressure. So whenever there's a lot of air, that air wants to leave and go to areas where there's not as much. So it can equal out. It's all about the equilibrium. So high pressure, we usually label that with a blue H. Low pressure, a red L. We already know also that moving air is wind. Number three, when you have warmer air or when air gets warmer, it starts to spread out. It becomes less dense and it rises. And all of that tells us that it's at a low pressure. Rising air, spreading air is a low pressure. Now, number four, cooler air or air that's cooling, it condenses and becomes more dense. It sinks. And we know that is high pressure. So if you got as more air, you got high pressure, less air, low pressure. And we also know that, number five, the earth rotates. It definitely rotates. Now here we're going to have our Earth and we're going to have lines of latitude. We're going to draw our equator and the 30 degree north and south line and the 60 degree north and south line, as well as the 90 degree north and south line up at the poles, making a total of 180 degrees, which is half the circle. Good thing we're only looking at half of the three dimensional sphere. Now, we know that the sun's giving us energy, and we're going to start talking about the temperature first. Now, at the equator, we know that it's hot, and it's getting the most direct sunlight. So wherever it's hot, we're going to have air that is rising. So if you're looking, kind of looking at this three-dimensionally, if it's the air is rising from the surface to the top of the troposphere, now, once it gets to the top of the troposphere, it spreads out. And after it spreads out, it starts to cool down. And we know that when the air is cooling down, it actually wants to sink. So when we have all this rising and then the sinking air, we're forming actually an, a nice little convection current. So the air is actually traveling in a little convection current ar around the equator, in between the equator and the 30 degree north and south lines. Now, wherever it's cold, which we can start at the poles, the north and the south pole, we're gonna have sinking air. I drew the sinking air. Whenever the air sinks and hits the surface, it's actually going to spread out on, along the surface. So it's going to travel towards the equator. And then after it gets hot again, it gets hot way before it gets to the equator, so it starts to rise. And then once it rises, it's going to circulate back. And we have another little convection cell, as you can see. So whatever, notice it's mirror, mirroring the northern and southern hemisphere. Everything we do to the north, we do to the south. Now, in between there, we're going to have a convection cell being formed because of the other convection cells. Now, since air is rising at the 60 degree marks, we're gonna have air converging from the south and from the north. And then we have air, whenever it's rising, after it gets to the top of the troposphere, it spreads out. Now, remember, wherever we have rising air, we have a low pressure. And wherever we have high, an, a sinking air, we have high pressure. So we can kind of go ahead and fill in our pressure zones as they are. And we're going to talk about those a little later when we talk about climate. Now, when we remember that air travels from high to low, so our air is traveling from the H's to the L's, the L areas. 
So this is a, a very general drawing, but this is how our air circulates globally. Now notice I'm using a pencil to draw this airflow because I will need this eraser later. I'm not going to I'm not going to keep these arrows here because it's not exactly how it's going to work. But if you can see again, I'm drawing airflow from the high pressure zones to the low pressure zones. Now if you notice it's always the air is always going from the north to the south or the south to the north and I'm wondering if that's exactly how that how it works all the time it's not you probably knew that so that's actually not how it's gonna work we have to bring in the rotation of the earth going to start talking about the rotation of the earth and if you can kind of tell in the northern hemispheres which is the face that you're looking at right now it's spinning counterclockwise it's spinning counterclockwise now in the southern hemisphere it is spinning the opposite direction they're both spinning in the same way but if you're looking at it from the bottom it is spinning clockwise so because of that counterclockwise and clockwise motion the difference we're going to have some differences between the north and the south. So here's the north. Now we see that in the northern hemisphere the winds are deflected to the right, southern hemisphere the winds are deflected to the left. So as the earth rotates, if we can kind of pretend air wants to travel from the north pole to the equator and the south pole of the equator, we can kind of see what it's going to do. The earth is turning underneath the wind and it gets deflected to the right and opposite in the southern hemisphere it gets deflected to the left and you can kind of tell that the earth is going to spin underneath the wind we call this the coriolis effect and that's going to have to do a lot with our air currents now if we go back to our picture of the earth so we're looking at those north to south and south to north uh, air currents notice I'm erasing them because we know that air it gets deflected west or to the right or to the left depending on what hemisphere they're in so in the north remember they get deflected to the right and in the south they get deflected to the left so the air is still going to travel from high to low pressure but as it does that because of the Earth's rotation it's going to get deflected so we're in the northern hemisphere now so the air is going to get deflected to the right in the, from the direction where it's traveling. And when we go down to the southern hemisphere, whatever direction the air is going to travel from high to low pressure, it's going to get deflected 
to the left. And remember, again, that's the Coriolis effect that's making that work. The spin of the Earth is causing everything to get deflected. It has to do with how fast it spins at the equator, how fast it spins at the poles, how it's different. So now we see that St. Louis is sitting in between where it's traveling from, the air's traveling from south to north, but then it's going to the west, or from the, sorry, from the west to the east. We call those the prevailing westerlies. Now at the poles, we call those the polar easterlies, and then in, bet in, the, in between, at the equator, to 30 degrees north and south, those are the trade winds. Now, if we take a look at St. Louis again, we see that, again, air travels from high to low pressure, and we live in the area where there's the prevailing westerlies. So, there's my great USA. So, in St. Louis, where's our air gonna travel from? We're at about 40 degrees north latitude. So we're in between that 30, and 30 north and 60 north. We get the prevailing westerlies coming from the east to the, or from the west to the east, I'm sorry, again. And so all of our weather and all of our winds are gonna be, our global winds, that is, are gonna be coming from the west to the east. Now, this is different on a local scale. You can have winds blowing from west, from the east, or from the north or the south, but globally, our weather's gonna travel from west to east. That's why I put usually in very bold letters. Now, remember, again, air travels from high to low pressure, moving air is wind, warm is low, cold is high, and then the air, because the Earth rotates, we have the Coriolis effect. And then the prevailing westerlies take over the United States weather. And all of this has to do with the differences in temperature made by the sun.